In this video, we'll explore how a real-world CI-CD pipeline works using Circle CI example. And this is not just theory, I'll also show you a fully functional CI-CD pipeline that's already being used. So we'll start with a quick overview of how these pipelines work at a very high level, and then we'll dive into creating such a workflow step by step. And you'll see how all these parts work together and how you can manually approve deployments before they go live on Circle CI platform. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to set up automated testing, linting and deployments across multiple environments, including development, staging and production. Let's start with this high-level diagram to understand how a typical CI-CD pipeline works. So usually you start by pulling the repository and making changes locally in your computer. And once your changes here are ready, you push them to a source control platform like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket and so on. In our case, we'll use GitHub as an example. And next from here, you open a pull request in the GitHub platform, which is a pull request to the main branch, which could be master, staging, or main, and this depends on your workflow. And once you open this pull request, it triggers some actions here in the GitHub. And these are called pipeline jobs in GitHub. This can be, for example, installing dependencies on your repository, or running linter, or running automated tests, and so on. And from here, you usually can have two scenarios. First one is success scenario, where everything passes, meaning all of the jobs are successful and you also got an approval for your pull request. And the second scenario is where one of your jobs fails. For example, one of your tests might fail, and in this case, this whole job will fail, and you won't be able to merge this or deploy this until you fix your changes here. But if you assume that all of the tests pass in your case, now you are able to move to the next stage, which is deployment. And here you will use some sort of deployment platform like Circle CI, but this can be other platform like Jenkins, Travis CI, and so on. But the general idea is the same for all of them. Let's say you have a job to install dependencies, and you can see that this is linked to Circle CI install dependencies job. Or for example, if you have a step to run all of the tests, you can see that this is also linked to the test job in the Circle CI, and all of these jobs are linked to Circle CI jobs in their platform. So here you can check whether your jobs have passed or failed, and if they passed, you can now approve and deploy them to development or to staging, for example. And this depends from your environments, but in general, you might have one for deploying to development, and another one for staging, and the last one for production. And once you manually approve one of these, for example, you approve to deploy it to development, it will start running this job of deploying it to development, and your code will end up in the development server if it was successful. And let's say you tested your changes in the dev server and everything looks fine. Now you can proceed to deploying to staging and pushing it to the staging server. And you can similarly also deploy it to production and proceed to moving your code to production server. Here is an example pull request, which is this part of our diagram. And as you can see, we have installed dependencies job, which succeeded. And then we ran the linter and then we also ran the tests in our CI CD pipeline. And all of these tests are passing. So now we are able to deploy it to development and staging. And if you click on details on one of these, for example, if you want to deploy to staging, you can click on details on this one and this will take you to the Circle CI platform and you will see the exact jobs and workflow that you had in the GitHub. For example, you can see we have installed dependencies which succeeded and if I click on this, here I can see all of these steps that we ran in the terminal to install the dependencies and now we will see this in action also in the code. And here you can see, for example, I already approved this deployment to development and it deployed to the development server and similar to that we have deployment to staging and also for production. For example, I can click on this and then I can approve the deployment to production here and this will start the deployment to production server. And that is this part of our roadmap. So if I approve the deployment to production, it will start running the production job and it will deploy the code to the production server here. Now let's see how all of this works in the code level. So in your repository, you would create a .circleci folder, which is a hidden folder. And inside of it, you will have the config.yaml file. And in this config.yaml file, you specify the jobs and steps that it needs to take to deploy your code to production or to staging or to development. And here, as you can see, we have jobs and we have workflows. So workflows is where we define the pipeline stages, such as installing dependencies, running tests, linting, and deploying to different environments. And the jobs specify the jobs that we saw on GitHub, for example, for installing dependencies or deploying to staging or running the lint job and so on. So here for installing dependencies, you can see we first specify the docker image, which is the image that we will use for this repository. 
And here we check out to the repository and then we run this command to install all of the dependencies. This can be yarn install or depending on your package manager, this can also be npm install or pnpm install and so on. And lastly, we specify the path to the node modules, which is from root, it will be located in the node modules folder. And this is just one of the jobs that we defined in the CircleCI config. We can have many such jobs, for example, the next one we have for linting, which runs the yarn lint command. The other one is for test job, which again specifies the docker image and does the same steps and then at the end it runs the automated tests inside of this repository. And then we have deploy to dev and deploy to staging and also deploy to prod jobs. These are mostly similar, we first set the docker image, which is the image that is going to be used. Then we define these steps which need to be taken to deploy this to the development server. So we check out to the branch and then we attach the workspace. And lastly we specify the command that needs to be run, which is this command and it will use the deploy.sh script to deploy this to development server. And this is no different than deploy to staging, except that for deploy to staging we might use another script, but here as you can see we are using the same script to deploy to staging. And we similarly have the deploy to production, which is again using the exact same script, but this time it is named deploy to production, and this will deploy to the production, but the same code and the same workflow. And now inside of the workflows you can see we have one workflow, which is deployment workflow. And that is this workflow that you saw in the platform of CircleCI. And here in the workflow we use the jobs which are the same jobs that we defined earlier. So first we run the install dependencies, then we run the lint job, then the test job, and then we have these ones, which as you can see can have also dependencies. For example, to be able to deploy this code to development, this requires the test job to be passed, and otherwise you won't be able to deploy it to development. And then for example you can see for staging we also need an approval to to be able to deploy to staging and this also requires the deploy dev workflow to be passed so if you haven't deployed your code to development you won't be able to deploy it to staging as well and then we have deploy staging which requires you to approve the staging deployment and then we have the deployment to production which first requires you to deploy this to staging and once it has been deployed and you also approve the deployment to production only then your code will end up in the production environment and you will see your changes in the production server and that is how all of this works under the hood from GitHub repositories to the GitHub jobs and onto the CircleCI jobs and workflows and then it goes to the development, staging and production servers with automating CI-CD deployments. And you can also practice this part yourself by registering to CircleCI or Jenkins and they both offer a free tier for you to practice and maybe you can try to set up a very simplistic design of a CircleCI and see how that all works together. So hope this was helpful and see you next time.